Greetings everyone, my name is Etherville, and welcome back to my let's play of Castlevania Bloodlines. When we last left off, I just cleared the Shrine of Atlantis, and now we're moving northwest to the Leading Tower of Pisa, located in Italy. Let's go. When you first start off, immediately start by whipping this harpy. They're, they're quite annoying, and I find in latter stages to use to use the boomerang more. The axe works well, but it's kind of difficult to hit them sometimes. And here's a new, new enemy, or reused enemy that is. These bulls will rip out the comms, uh, comms of these stands, so quickly whip them before they can hit you. Ah, there's a boomerang, showing you the use of how useful it is, especially with these. By whipping these uh, minotaurs as quickly as possible, you can pretty much stun lock them. Pretty simple. Now we're in the tower itself. I decided to quickly go over the gold tree steps and avoid everything else except for these floating eyes, sadly. Alright. This is where the boomerang becomes very useful. Unfortunately, that's why if you don't kill the harpies fast enough, that's what they do. So, yeah, a bit of revenge there. Over here is a special section where it separates depending on who you're playing as. While playing as John, or Jonathan, uh, you essentially have to swing on the roof. If not, you fall to your death. Here are some mummies, which throw their bands at you. Note that the, note that the swing took multiple tries. Nice upgrade. And here's the first mini boss of the game in this stage, the Skeleton Dragon. Which is essentially like most of the other ones. Pretty simple to defeat. I just used my special ability and whipped him twice. Still annoying though. Alright, here's the unique section of the stage. Or one of them. Remember when I was talking about the last part of some of the unique things this game did? Which the previous Castlevania games didn't really do? Here's one. At the Leaning Tower of Pisa, uh, the tower leans left and right, and you have to be careful not to fall off. Or get hit by the Medusa heads. Though, one of the annoying aspects of this stage is that when you hit those candles, whatever objects in them will fall to the platform, or many of the gems, so make sure to be close to them. The, Med the Medusa heads themselves aren't too much of a threat, as long as you're careful and point in the correct direction, as they always come from the opposite side of the screen of which you are at. Like so. Bit close there. You continue. Thing I could just collect it, it killed all the Medusa heads, like in the previous part. Let's exit. Alright. Classic bats. There's the whip, which can be uh, destroyed by your own whip. Uh, I had some issues with jumping over this, so I decided to play it safe. Guarding the holy water as I find it to be one of the least useful abilities in this game. Yeah, it was kind of nerfed because of all the moving enemies. It used to be a good killer against stationary targets, but here, not so much. Except for its special form, but still. Another close call. Ah, the most annoying section of this stage, the one I dislike. Essentially, you have to race through these platforms from whichever section they are and kill these skeleton drakes or minotaurs. It's so easy to fall off here as I'll demonstrate pretty soon. I died so many times in previous runs when I was a child, as, as well as test runs, due to getting hit by these. This is where the boomerang is essentially like a godsend, so... Ah, thankfully he dropped it. Short on one side, and he'll hit it. And as I demonstrated, why I hate this much. Ugh, fell off the side so easily. Alright then, let's go back and do it again. Now, I would like to talk about the game's plot a bit, uh, while, they, while I travel back. Well, as you may have heard, uh, that Duchess, uh, Duchess is, or Countess, is trying to uh, revive Dra her uncle Dracula. But what he didn't mention was that an, an evil witch uh, actually revived her, the Duchess for, or Countess from the dead, as she already died several hundred years ago. And 
And uh, it was also mentioned that the Count has uh, essentially orchestrated World War I by manipulating the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand or something along the same lines. So, yeah, she's using the souls of all those dead troops as uh, troops as well as power for reviving Dracula. Anyways, we're back to the jumping up section, which I so do enjoy. Has it intended? Being more careful this time, I suggest staying near the center of the platforms and just jumping left and right. Also, have a boomerang handy. All right, here's the, here's the section where you have to go to the right. Be very careful. I almost died in this part. Can you see jump? By making careful character jumps, it shouldn't be too bad. Just be careful not to be hit by anything. Thank goodness there are only one in three kills. Alright. One last room and we're at the boss. Decided to switch my weapon for an axe, so I could suggest taking the boom right. Alright then, here's the boss at the stage. The giant hell bat. Or I like to call it the bat which keeps a uh, which keeps annoying the ear so much. First, he'll try shooting you with his tail. Uh, just dodge it. Uh, just try dodging it. At this point, he spins around the tower, uh, trying to psych you out. Point. He'll try whipping you with his tail. Again, he'll try shooting his tail at you, but normal. And then when you knock him down to a low enough health, he'll switch back, spin around, and then he'll try ramming you on the ground or Goomba stopping you, essentially. Just keep uh, dodging him left and right, and he should go down pretty easily. Ooh, that voice. So annoying. As much as I love the Genesis sound chip, it does have some questionable sound, uh, sound bites. There's the orb. And thus, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is now clear. I still wonder how the, how the enemies were able to move the tower left and right during uh, Stage 3-5. Oh well, probably super magic. Overall, I I kind of don't really like this stage, but it's serviceable. Anyways, moving up north to the munitions factory in Germany. Now, compared to the previous stage, this is one of my more favorite stages of the game, next to Atlantis in the final one. Be wary of the skeletons in the background, as they can throw bones at you, and after a while they'll jump right around the off the fence into the, the just like that skeleton just did. They can jump after throwing a bone, they can just jump right into the foreground. Just keep moving right and be careful of those skeletons coming out of the uh, barrels. Wow, another close call. I'm kinda playing risky and now it seems. Just be wary that whenever they throw the bone, they're at one risk of actually hitting you with their drone bone. Now, these any these construction skeletons, like the ones shown earlier, unlike the other ones, once you hit them once, they they'll collapse, but they won't die until you hit them again once more. Also, using the whips properties for fun and profit. Alrighty then. Just like you can. Just be careful once you hit them. Make sure to wait for them to come back. Otherwise, you make a hit. Here's a secret compartment containing food. Oh, it's not really useful now. Alright. Ah, I love the music of the stage. Next to the second Atlantis. Also, do like the more, well, for the 1940s or 1920s of when this happened, futuristic doors. Compared to the first two stages of the game, these, these two stages that we've gone through are more, how do I say it, modernized or industrialized. Which is a nice touch compared to all the previous Castlevania games, which essentially took place in Gothic castles. Now we finally have more industrial or relatively modern structures. Be wary of these essential these pistons as they can just crush you into a wall and insta-kill you. 
I kind of ducked here, and I think I would be crushed. But no. Wait for that. Uh, wait for that piston to move. Then start jumping up. You wear that one. And, and move. All right. Here's the gear cog, which is kind of glitchy in some regard. Just jump on top of it, and you should be able to move it. Also, be careful of the surprise Medusa heads. I do love the the, the clockwork architect uh, architect here architecture. It's only me and my slippery tongue. So this seems to be out of this must be one of the only factories which didn't get destroyed during World War One and the occupation. Continue on. No, oh, it's a well, it's a factory, but it looks seems to be more like a, a clockwork mixture or something. <laughs> well, who do I know? Yeah. Ah, this section. As you'll see soon enough, I almost failed this and fell to my death. But thanks to Jonathan's whip swing abilities, I was able to survive. Be wary of those ghosts, as they take two hits to kill and can knock you into the pit. Uh, sending one of these platforms will uh, will force the other one to go down. And I have to jump. At this point, at this point right here, I kind of screwed up my jump, and I thought I was going to die. But somehow, I would, thanks to my weapon skills, I was somehow able to grab onto the ledge right over there and swing my way off to safety. If I was playing as Eric, I don't think I would have survived that. So lucky trophy. Anyways, time for the next mini boss, Dracula's monster. He first tries by whipping you with a spiral. They try swooping you at the ground, just duck. And when he hits the ground, just jump on one of the platforms. And yeah, it was rather simple. Too simple. <laughs> I kind of pity him. Explain the. Ah, these robots. Or robot drivers. Use a special weapon or whip them with one hit to kill them. Though, in this case, I just used my special ability as the fighting army to take care of. And yeah, those blades really hurt. Just go through their empty spots. There are some glitches with the, with hitch detection, which you can use to your advantage, but I suggest they taking it safe, as these can just three hit and kill you. Ah, we're back outside now. I wonder what that castle is in the background, though. It can't be the final boss castle, as it's way to the west. Be careful the these platforms uh, carry on these gears. Be careful the, of these mace drawers, as they can knock you over. I demonstrated. Or didn't demonstrate here. Just play it safe, essentially. Alright, we've now made it to the second to last room. All these enemies can be destroyed using the whip. But I decided to just kill everything in one hit again, as they're quite, these gearbots are quite annoying. Speaking of gearbot, here's the boss of essentially the munitions factory. It's a clockwork automaton, as I call it. Attack the ominous metal to kill it or destroy it. So it'll first start off by jumping left to right. At this point, he'll spin around and jump to the floor. At this point, he swims to the floor and uh, rams to the left, left or right. Just try jump on the laser platform. Do it in the center. At this point, he'll throw uh, gears at you. Just walk away, jump from them. Now, he'll throw gears at the ground. Just jump over them. At that point, he was trying to ram me, but I was able to knock him out of it by hitting him. When he's at critical health at 5 or 6 bars, he becomes uh, twice as, uh, as large and go goes into rage mode. Just dodge him with this, and do the final three whips, and BOOM! He's down. Boom. And someone uh, took the drum set too seriously, it seems. There's the orb. Yeah, the bosses of this game are kind of easy. Anyways, the missions factory is now clear. Only two or three more stages left to go before Dracula is done for. Overall, I rather like the missions factory, though, uh, though it was kind of quite hard with a lot of close calls and deaths. Anyways, thanks for watching viewers, in the next part we'll be exploring France.
have a nice day.